um, so let's say we are uh, you know we are considering submission and uh, we are talking okay how do i uh, practically do that right that could be the question you know especially in a in a scenario where in a in a in a situation where you 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 sense that uh, well the husband is um, let's say he's he's doing everything you know um, according to scripture but from a practical standpoint in the sense you know let's say if the husband needs to maybe it's something to do with uh, buying something some decision right maybe you want to move to a, a certain other place um, uh, relocate to some other place uh, relocate so uh, you know you're considering all those things and let, let's say in an example like that and uh, uh, well as a wife you feel that well it's you no know, uh, certain things have been overlooked. Okay, so certain things have been completely overlooked by the husband. So in that case also, you know, do I submit? So that's the thing, right? Do I just blindly submit? Well, the answer is no. Well, if you see that, okay, there are, because it involves, maybe it's a major decision, it involves the entire family, it could impact the entire family, you know, your, your kids, everything, you know, it could have a major impact. So. Um, so the thing is not to blindly submit, you know, though your heart, in your heart, yes, uh, you, you would, you're, you're saying, okay, I'm not, you know, against this, I'm not against God's design, I will yield it, I will submit. Um, but the thing is this, to to suggest, right, to bring in counsel, counsel, you know, to bring in wise counsel, to, to bring in in the form of uh, suggestions and uh, and say, okay, you know, have you considered this? You know, let's consider this, where you're going to look at this, maybe, genuinely the husband did not you know consider those options right maybe you're just looking at okay maybe we need to relocate to another city we need to do this maybe uh, but probably there were other things that he did not consider at all right uh, so so in you bringing up as a wife in you bringing up saying okay why don't we you know, why don't we look at this why don't we consider this or why don't we get somebody's uh, opinion um, you're doing the right thing so, so maybe the husband didn't consider, and uh, and uh, yeah, so that would actually turn the whole situation around. The, the husband would be able to uh, look at these things, look at these options, and uh, and really weigh them before making the decision. Okay, uh, but what if you know a husband has considered all that, and then also you you still feel you know you're not able, not able to put a finger on it, but you still feel that something is not right, then. You know what do you do, right? Do I fight? Do I you know, not give in? Do I make make things difficult for my husband? Well, the right thing to do would be to submit, would be to yield, because you've you know you've you've done everything. Like you've brought in the wisdom, you've brought in the information, you've brought in the counsel that is required, and and after all that is considered and you know sufficiently answered sufficiently dealt with you're still saying okay you you still feel a little you know uneasy about it well the husband is being very confident and saying okay we need to do it the thing is to yield the matter right to god and and say okay god you know we've done this um give us the oneness of heart give us the oneness of mind right i don't know what it is that is causing this difference you know they, they're not able to see um you know be one in this particular thing and it's a big thing so God, you know, you give us the oneness of heart, whatever it is, you know, give us the one. I'm, and I'm yielding this, I'm deferring this, you know, uh, decision where I'm saying that, well, let the husband lead, I'm yielding. Um, but God, you give us that oneness. If there's anything uh, that needs to be changed, Lord, you, we've done all we can, but you, you show us, right? So that would be the right uh, thing to do rather than fight and create a scene and you know uh, uh, and act up and temper tantrums and you know and endless arguments um, this would be the way to do it right? so this would how it would work in, in in real life maybe in a in a difficult situation like this right okay um, well we also see that uh, for the husband and the wife you know uh, and there are if uh, if we, if we look at uh, ministry, and if we look at uh, the calling, especially you know, since all of us are being trained for 
uh, to serve the Lord right, in one way or the other. So we look at Paul writing to Timothy, and uh, we can look at those uh, passages where he's laying down, okay, how should a man of God be? How should a woman of God be? Okay, so um, so he, he's, we can consider those uh, passages as well. And uh, um, well, we, this applies to us as believers also, okay, not just as people who are serving, but it would, you know, specifically it applies to those people who are serving maybe in, in some capacity or in leadership in church or desiring uh, a position of leadership in church. Uh, it would certainly apply to them, for them specifically, but also as believers, you know, generally it would apply to us also. So it, it's good to consider those passages. You know, we're talking about First Timothy 3. Um, and we're also looking at Titus chapter 1. So these are passages in Titus chapter 2 where, where Paul writes about, okay, this is how if someone desires a position of a bishop or a spiritual overseer, you know, he desires a good work. He, it's, it's a good work. And then he talks about you know, what, are, what are those qualifications, right? Um, and he says he must be without fault. He must have only one wife. He must be sober, self-controlled, orderly. Uh, be hospitable, able to teach, uh, should not be uh, someone given to alcohol, uh, but must be, or must, should, he should not be a violent person, but be gentle, peaceful, not be a lover of money, lover of things, material things, uh, you know, all those things. Right? So these are some things for us to, when we are considering the role of the husband, we, these are some things to consider also. And if you see in the same passage, it also talks about the wife. It also talks about you know the children and so on. Um, if you, you, for example, if you if you look at Titus chapter two, right? It, it says, okay, um, uh, instruct the older men to be sober, sensible, self-controlled, and instruct the older women to behave as women who should live a holy life. They should not be slanderers, um, nor given to wine and so on. So we see that. Uh, you know, that's we can take that, add that also as the role of the husband, the role of the wife. Okay, so um, so from these passages, uh, you know, in the notes there is a column. You can you can look at that. You can go through that. It talks about character. It talks about being self-controlled, being sober-minded, uh, etc. Right. Um, so that's those are some things that we can look at. Okay, uh, we're going to look at um, you know. In the role of the husband and the wife, the fact is that um, where we see words as expression of love, we also see physical intimacy. The way God created marriage, the what God, the way God created man and woman, um, you know, in the context of marriage, for them to enjoy physical intimacy. Okay, well, uh, sex has, uh, uh, you know, the objective is of course procreation. But it also something to be enjoyed. Okay, so that's how God created it. Now, when we look at uh, the world outside, it talks about sex being enjoyed, being indulged in uh, in a, any context, right? Uh, before marriage or extramarital, you know, partners. Um, so there's no limits. There's no boundaries there. The way the world would look at it, right? But the way God designed it, primarily, it's within the context of marriage, in, in the context of a loving, accountable, responsible, faithful relationship with one another. Okay, so that's how God created it. So in that context, it is meant to be enjoyed. Okay, for example, if you look at 1 Corinthians 7, um, Paul writes, you know, about... Um, uh, about about sexual intimacy, right? Uh, about marriage, um, and in the context of marriage, right? We should understand that always. So he, um, so this is what he says. Uh, let's uh, look at that passage. It's there in your notes. Uh, I'm just going to read from the New King James version, and then read in the Message version also. Um, so he says, uh, you know, one Corinthians seven verse one, concerning the things of which you wrote to me. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her 
and likewise also the wife to her husband. So you see in this um, role of husband and wife, he's talking particularly when he says, you know, let the uh, husband render the affection due to his wife, he's talking about physical intimacy. Right? So uh, the thing is that there's nothing, uh, because some people have this understanding that sex is sin. Even within the context of marriage, it's something dirty, something that is shameful, uh, something that is not to be indulged in. Okay. We don't see that in scripture. And that's not God's design as well. Right. So it, it, you know, you see the extremes, right? And one extreme is like everything is okay. You know, that's the that's a world that's a very uh, satanic uh, view of you know uh, of God's design for sex. It's a it's a total distortion of God's design for physical intimacy. Total distortion of it. But the other thing is also. Uh, you know, sadly, uh, even among believers, even even in the church, uh, you know, it's it's like it is something shameful. It's not to be. Uh, it's it's not there, and uh, um, uh, it's not something to be discussed, etc. So it's it's something that we see that um, totally unbiblically. Okay, so in the context of marriage, God designed marriage to be enjoyed between the husband and the wife. Okay. So to um, uh, so we see this passage, uh, one Corinthians seven. Now I'm just I just want to read from the uh, from the notes. We, we have the message version there. So um, we see. Okay, now getting down to the questions you asked your in your letter to me first. You know, so which means that people have actually, if you study when you study one Corinthians, you'll see that people have asked Paul a series of. You know, uh, questions about marriage, about food offered to idols, about you know a lot of things that they were having struggles with, you know, as a church or challenge as a church. So Paul is actually answering, addressing all those things. So one of the things he addresses here is about uh, physical intimacy, about, about sex. Okay, so he's saying that um, uh, it it is a good thing to have sexual. Is it a good thing to have sexual relationships? You know, that's what you ask uh, because. If you look at the Corinthian church, uh, the society outside, it was a very permissive, promiscuous society. Right? They had the temple, temple uh, the Aphrodite, and you know all that kind of uh, worship was happening. Uh, there were temple prostitutes and so on. So, you know, it was a very confusing, uh, you know, uh, message about sex. So now people have become believers. They've come to the church, and uh, Hey, what is the right thing? Okay, the world outside, there is this whole thing of, uh, you know, uh, very promiscu promiscuity. Now that's the thing. That's the thing that we've actually um, learned about sex because that's what we've seen in the world. And now we've come to, we've come to the saving knowledge of Christ. We've come to church. Now that's the same understanding that we are carrying. So is it right? Is it wrong? Right. So Paul is addressing that. Right. So he's saying certainly. Verse 2, but only within a certain context, it's good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Uh, sex drives, sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality, the husband seeking to satisfy the wife and the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. Abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it. And if it's for the purpose of prayer and fasting and only for such times, then come back together again. Satan has an ing ingenious way of tempting us when we least expect it. Um, and then he says, uh, I'm not. You know, you understand commanding these periods of abstinence, only providing my best counsel if you should choose them. So, so you see that um, it's very liberating, actually. It's not confining, very liberating. And the Lord is saying, okay, within the context, the, Lord, the Lord's desire and will and plan is that within the context of the way he designed sex, within the context of marriage. Okay. So, um, so that understanding, you know, 
the husband should have that understanding the wife should have or the husband to be should have the wife to be should should have so if there is any um, you know anything that is uh, you know any understanding that we have if, if we've been trained by the world you know to think about sex in this manner we should drop it uh, and get trained by scripture you know, get renewed uh, uh, renew our understanding by the understanding or by the design that is in scripture the truth that is in scripture okay so then um uh, one more thing is uh, you know the, you know we, we, while we consider these roles all these things come up no no challenges okay the woman needs to be like the proverbs 31 wife you know uh, the wife needs to be then you know so many uh, so many times the excuse me there are messages you know um, preached and uh, and and the, and the and the wife to be you know not usually you know it's it's preached in the weddings it's preached in uh, engagements proverbs 31 you know everybody reads that and it's preached from that so this is how she must be and well we, we don't know what really what's going on in the you know in the in the girl's mind you know wow that's such a tall order so many things to do so many things to consider um, um if you look at it you know it's it's it has both sides to it okay one it's a it's an a, it's a picture of a, of a very healthy marriage a very healthy family okay it's a picture of that and in in that uh, environment in that setting well this is how the woman or the wife this is how she's thriving right um, she is energetic purposeful and uh, well she's a visionary all that you know, she's very industrious we see all that happening there but we also see the the support the appreciation that comes from the family so many times you know we we miss out on that okay wife should be like this wife should be like this you need to do this but you see the husband role in that you see the children's role in that family's role in that which means that uh, you know as parents how we relate to one another is uh, you know it, for example if uh, of course we look at it in parenting for example if we see, if we see the uh, the father or the husband uh, is going to be con constantly being rude to his wife and putting her down and saying that you don't know this you don't know anything so you just keep quiet then that is the attitude the children will also carry right while the children might pity or take the kick you know cause of supporting and taking sides uh, all that might happen but also when it comes to certain things you know they will put down and say okay you don't know anything well, that will be the attitude that they will carry also but here we see something else the children have a healthy attitude have a healthy relationship with the mother right okay so uh, let's just go through that okay this is a good news um, version right proverbs 31 uh, was telling her how hard it is to find a capable wife she is far more um uh, she's worth far more than jewels her husband puts his confidence in her he will never be poor as long as she lives she makes him good and she does him good and never harm she keeps herself busy making wool and linen cloth she brings home food from out of the way places as merchant ships do she gets up before daylight to prepare food for her family and to tell her servant what women what to do she looks at land and buys it and with money she has earned she plants a vineyard she's a hard worker strong and industrious she knows the value of everything she makes and works late into the night she spins her own thread and weaves her own cloth and she's generous to the poor and needy she doesn't worry when it snows because the family has warm clothing she makes bedspreads and wears clothes of fine purple linen wow right and uh, her husband is well known one of the leading citizens she makes clothes and belts and sells them to merchants she's strong and respected and not afraid of the future she speaks with a gentle wisdom she's always busy and looks after her husband, family's needs her children show their appreciation and her husband praises her he says many women are good wives but you are the best of them all charm is deceptive and beauty disappearing but a woman who honors the lord should be praised 
give her credit for all that she does. She deserves the respect of everyone. Okay, so when when we read through, yes, it is a it is a, it is kind seems kind of you know it's it's amazing. It's an overwhelming list. There's a lot of things that the Proverbs 31 wife or the Proverbs 31 woman does, but you also see you know in there. This is what the husband says. You know, husband does. Um, it, it says her husband right at the beginning. You know, her husband puts his confidence in her, and he will never be poor. Okay, we see that verse eleven. He puts his confidence in her, which means he trusts her, and he honors her, and he says, "Okay, I'm confident uh, about you know who you are and what you do." Husband puts you know so, which means that. The, that confidence, you know, this whole act of nourishing and cherishing is in place, right? And he is, he puts the confidence, he's empowered the wife to release her to be all that she is, that she needs to be. And we also see something else there. Um, her children show their appreciation. Okay, now the children need to be taught. You know, like we uh, read that passage today, you know, Deuteronomy 6 now. <laughs> Children learn when we when we diligently teach them, but children also learn, pick up based on you know how things are in the home, right? They don't have to be taught, but they just pick it up. Hey, this is how somebody is behaving. Uh, well, if somebody loses their temper, they shout, and so if I you know if if I need if we want if I want things to be done, then I will also I also need to shout. If I am angry, you know somebody is throwing stuff, so I can also do that. If I'm angry, let me also throw some stuff and make some noise. And children learn. Right? So here, the children have learned to show appreciation, whether by teaching, saying that hey, you need to appreciate. You know, we're eating something. Have you thanked? Have you thanked your mother? Have you thanked you know whoever has prepared the food? Uh, you know, it could be someone helping in the house. No, but have you thanked? Have you said thank you? Um, well, you like it. Okay, why don't you tell them? Right. So the children learn to show appreciation. So it says here that her children show their appreciation, and her husband praises her. Wow. So that's also the other side. Has the husband praised? You know. So it's not a one-time thing. It's a. It's a culture in the home. It's something of a value in the home. And it's a normal thing in the home where one observes, one appreciates, and expresses that appreciation as a praise, as, an, as a compliment. Right? And it says husband praises her, which means that the husband is saying, Wow, you're looking good today. You know, this suits you. And uh, what you prepared for the guests. Brilliant, wonderful. Her husband is praising, complimenting. And the children are learning that and the children are appreciating. And husband is telling the children, you know, why don't you tell mom that you know she did this? So why don't you just tell her? So um, you know, he, he's also he's also complimenting. He's uh, you know, when compared to the other women, he's he's complimenting. Um so we see that. One of the, one of the important things that we need to learn is that, you know, as husbands, uh, we need to learn that okay, if I want my wife to be the Proverbs thirty one wife, then I need to be the Proverbs thirty one husband as well. Right? It goes both ways. Right? It's not a one sided thing. Okay. So um, so this uh, you know we see that um, it's very very liberating the roles and you know to understand the roles. And expectations and responsibilities of the husband and the wife is a, a very foundational thing for one's marriage. It's a very fundamental thing, and it's very important uh, for one's uh, marriage. Right? You know, needs to be prepared. So this will actually create so much goodwill, and it'll it'll really create so much harmony in the house. And this is God's design. You see, this is God's design. Uh, this is how he is. He wants the home to be. Okay. Now, uh, I'm just looking at this uh, application section. If you want to go there, you can just. Uh, you know, when it comes to communication, when it comes to, um, you know, appreciating, 
um, when it comes to honoring you know we saw that okay the husband needs to love um, husband needs to communicate share and show that um, the wife also you know needs to love the husband uh, we respect the husband appreciate honor etc so now uh, what would really help is to understand what is the language that my wife understands or what is the language that my husband understands okay so we're not talking about a uh, uh, language like you know, english or french or spanish whatever but really we could be speaking the same language we could be communicating the same language but not being understood okay why is that because the as human beings you know we respond in different ways or we show appreciation appreciation in different ways or we receive appreciation in different ways right for someone uh, mere words right when you say it words uh, they feel loved they feel appreciated for someone else it is an act of service in the sense okay i you know why don't you sit down let me just serve you some food and that uh, for that person is you know they feel appreciated they feel loved for someone it's it's just physical touch you know it's, it's when when, I, when i'm saying physical touch you know just putting an arm around or just holding the hand of the person or being physical proximity with that person they feel loved they feel appreciated for someone else it's gifts it, it, it need not be something fancy something expensive uh, but something small it means that oh this person thought of me right my husband thought of me my wife thought of me and got this for me or made this for me and i feel appreciated and loved okay. for someone else it could be just quality time you know, spending time with another saying okay uh, let's just you know, we don't have to do anything we don't have to go on a major vacation but just spending time with one another you know the person feels loved so the thing is uh, you know we see that uh, dr gary chapman he's written a book on five love languages maybe you you some of you might have already left read it and maybe you have an understanding of it um so just to reiterate that you know this is how people could express love you know these are five there could be more and it could be in shades of you know it could be a mix of this right so this is how normally people uh, express love and also receive love okay and most most often the way they express love is also the way they receive it okay so uh, so you find out that okay uh, in what way now the, you know when, when it comes to we need to know the wife know the husband this is something for us to learn and know okay um okay this is how this person responds and uh, uh, or this is how the person expresses love so so they just imagine like if i don't have an understanding of it okay so so many times the husband will say you know i just you know I, so many times you know i have i have i have uh, you know expressed my affection my love but my wife does not understand at all and my wife does not reciprocate also. and the wife might have the same complaint saying okay my husband does not love me okay. and so many times i have said you know i have taken the initiative to say that or express and demonstrate my love for him he does not and a, and a classic case could be well let's say for example the husband for the uh, husband it is act of service okay so which means that um, if for the husband a cup of coffee is made in the morning he feels loved okay he feels appreciated whereas for the wife she feels appreciated if the husband communicates if the husband says it saying oh you are this you are that and the husband, maybe the husband writes a you know a small note and sticks it you know in the bathroom mirror and then she goes inside and she's surprised oh wow my husband loves me so let's say if this is their love language 
but they don't have an understanding of it. So the wife feels that, you know, I'm saying so many times, I love him. You know, I'm putting all these notes in his bag and saying, but, you know, in his wallet, you know, I'm surprised him with these, you know, I, I tell him with my words. And yet he's saying that he doesn't feel love. But the fact is this, the husband feels love when there is a you know act of service. You, know, you do something for him, or you serve you know food, or you bring him a cup of coffee, and and that's it. You don't have to put hundred notes, he just feels love. And for the wife, you know, he's he's been He's been, you know, doing this. He's been maybe, you know, uh, active service. He's been folding all the clothes and putting it away, getting her clothes ironed and putting it away, doing the dishes. And, you know, been, and he feels like, doesn't she know that I love her? It's because that I love her that I'm doing all this. But she does not. Right? So there's, there seems to be a major miscommunication. But once they understand that this is how the husband communicates his love, for him, it is this. And the husband learns, oh, I say, okay. Then this is how she uh, feels loved. You know, when I say it in words, okay. I'm not good at saying it in words. I'm good at just doing this stuff. You know, I bring this, I keep the house clean, maybe. I clean up the stuff, I fix things. You know, I fix the tap, I fix the, you know, and I'm showing her that I love her. Maybe I need to put things into words. It's, it's going to be tough for me. I'm not good at words, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to do it. So when the husband does that, or when the wife says, okay, maybe I should just do this. Oh, these are simple things. I can do it. So when, when both learn each other's language of love and express you know, affection, love, appreciation in these ways, then the marriage, you know, uh, thrives, flourishes, and then you understand that, wow, this is, my wife truly loves me. Or the husband says, uh, you know, uh, the wife says, my husband truly loves me because he's doing this, right? So, the, so this is the thing. Um, so it, it has, a, you know, uh, in the notes after this uh, application section, you know, uh, it has a very reflective uh, thing. So, uh, in, it's in a combination as well. So, you know, combination of one or more love languages. And it's good to go through um, just to open up our understanding. Oh, these are ways by which uh, the husband could feel loved or the wife would, my wife would feel loved or my husband would feel loved. And um, and the best thing is to, for, you know, both, uh, you know, we do the marriage preparation course. We normally, uh, uh, you know, there's an exercise that we do for the, husband to be and the wife to be right so that they can actually sit and write and then they can it's 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 an, it's an eye opener right for both of them wow this is it um uh, i never thought about this but then this is how you feel love wonderful right so so all this you can just go through that um any questions any questions here anything that you might want to share um No questions. Okay. Uh, so, how many of you have actually? Uh, you know, you can just put your hands up. Uh, how many of you have actually? Uh, uh, you know, you know about these love languages. Um, you've read the book, or you've heard it somewhere. Okay, John Paul. Yes, he is, did the marriage course. Okay, Zalitoli and Anita. Okay. Okay, so for some of us, it's a new thing, right? So uh, it's good if we get an understanding of it, uh, not just an understanding of it, but also in preparation, if you're single and you're preparing, um, to, to say, okay, this is something that I can actually, uh, so now that I know it, why don't I you know, express, demonstrate love in this way? For those of us who are married, you know, maybe we need to find out, okay, what is it that my spouse you know, how does he or she um, receive love and express love and, uh, and and then do that right okay fine so we'll we'll move on to um, to the next uh, chapter which is uh, attitude temperament and behavior we'll just uh, you know we'll go through it uh, a little bit and then um, 
uh, and then we'll uh, probably you know, continue in the ne next class, right? So uh, it's about attitudes, uh, about temperament and uh, behavior, right? Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so can I just say one just small sentence? Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead, please. Uh, there's also an online test uh, to find out which language belong to us. Okay, uh, okay. It's also helpful. You have the link for that? Uh, I'll share. Yeah. yeah, you can put it on the uh, on the saying the classwork. No, not the classwork, sorry. You can put it in the uh, stream itself. And that'll stream. be helpful. Yeah, you can put it on the stream. Okay, boss. Yeah, thanks. Okay, great. Right. Oh, for us, uh, yeah. So maybe, uh, yeah, that's a good important point, right? So for us to know ourselves, maybe we don't know. Um, yeah, so that, that would be helpful. Um, thanks. Thanks, John. Okay. okay. So so you see that, uh, you know, as important as language is to communicate to one another, uh, you know, this, this is really, uh, this is a big thing. Okay. One is understanding the role. And uh, the second one, of course, knowing uh, how to communicate in that role, and uh, so that the person feels appreciated, uh, honored, etc. Now we're talking about all this, uh, but how do I actually do it? It's when we understand uh, how the person, you know, your spouse responds, um, and uh, how the person understands the expression of love. Right? Okay. So. Um, so uh, uh, we're looking at chapter five, and we're seeing that uh, you know, as uh, one of the things that we we, we see is that uh, a, a marriage is it's a journey, right? It's a lifelong journey, okay? Which means it's a it's a fairly long time, right? Uh, and what we see in uh, you know in movies or uh, it, it's a it's a very short uh, span, and we just try to compress and uh, you know. Um, it's it's just one part of the picture. It's, it's not the whole. Um, uh, reality is uh, something else, and uh, you know it's something totally, um, uh, totally different. And it requires a whole lot of us, you know, putting into action, uh, uh, changing our minds, uh, you know, sacrifice a lot of things, uh, you know, shifts in our attitude, uh, everything. Uh, so. Um, so this, that's important to consider. So, so we're going to look at um, uh, this chapter, which talks about you know, our my attitude. Okay, even before I expect uh, the attitude uh, from my spouse, what should he or she? How should he or she be? You know, you talk about attitudes. What what is the right attitude? Um, you know, what is the uh, right temperament? And can I make changes to it? Right? Can I Make um, adjustments to it, right? Um, in in different things, right? So we might we might actually do certain things, or we might do the right things. Okay, for example, I might say, okay, am I not uh, taking care of the needs? Right? Am I not fulfilling my responsibility? Am I not uh, you know uh, doing what is expected? Okay, now this is what scripture says. I'm doing it. Um, but to see that, or to consider what is my attitude when I'm actually doing this, carrying this out. Okay, so which means when I, how do I think? How do I perceive? How do I communicate? It is very, very important. Okay, so uh, what is my attitude? What is my uh, my what is temperamentally? How how am I? you know in in this relationship how am i doing these things because you know i could have great abilities i could have great competencies right intellectually academically um but the fact is that if my attitude if my temperament is not right uh, it will show forth in the behavior and even though i might be doing you know uh, all those things you know what is required but my attitude actually denies it right the, my temperament denies it and uh, it actually colors my behavior okay so that's uh, the thing uh, we need to understand okay so let's say we have a, a different attitude 
if I, I mean, when I, when, you, when I'm saying I colors the behavior, I'm talking about attitude being negative, right? So if we, um, you know, so we, when we consider marriage, we have the husband, we have the wife, and uh, you know, two people with very different temperaments, right? Uh, very, very different maybe uh, attitudes even, and uh, our behavior and everything is uh, different. So, so the thing is that it it brings a lot of challenges. It also, you know, makes life enjoyable because it's interesting. The person is so different, but it also brings uh, challenges to the relationship, right? So we need to understand that. Okay, what are the, um, you know, uh, what are the two things, two main things? One is, you know, personally. Okay. Now the way I think, way I perceive things, the way I act, the way I communicate. Okay. Unless this is healthy. Um, it is not going to contribute to the marriage. It's not going to help the marriage. So it needs to be healthy, first of all. Okay. Secondly, you know, that um, I need to understand my spouse, which means I need to understand, you know, what my wife or my wife, what my house, how my spouse thinks, perceives, acts, communicates in different situations so that I understand her correctly. So, which means it, you know, I, what I perceive, what I think, and what she, what she perceives or he perceives things, acts, communicates. Right. Um, if I understand that, then it helps us in our interpersonal relationship. Okay. So, if our attitude is healthy and positive, then it would be, it will cause the relationship to thrive, flourish. If it's negative. With negative emotions, uh, then it is not really going to help. It is going to it is going to be detrimental. Okay, so I need to have this. I need to address this. Um, well, this may not have come into focus, right? And as a believer, yes, definitely. You know, God is teaching us. We are being yielded to the Holy Spirit, and and we don't live in isolation, right? We live. With uh, a, as a body of Christ, so we are. You know, there are certain things which 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 have been tempered by the Holy Spirit. There are certain things that have been seasoned by the Holy Spirit, and then we've we've undergone change. Um, so um, we've gone we've undergone change, right? But maybe you know we did not. There were certain things that we are carrying, and uh, it is not really a Christ-like attitude, right? It's not really a Christ-like temperament. So, well, that is going to be detrimental to the to the marriage. Maybe we need to understand that. Okay, so how can I have a Christ-like attitude? Um, first of all, you know, we uh, first of all to understand that we must strive or we must pursue Christ-likeness in our personal lives. Right? We must pursue as individuals. We must must pursue Christ likeness. That's a given. Now it's it seems like a repetition, but it's really foundational. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, Ephesians four, and um, okay, Ephesians four, verse thirteen. Okay, uh, um, it talks about the fivefold and why the fivefold is there in the in the body. Uh, verse 12 talks about for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to, a, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we see that it's, it's a normal thing to, to pursue this or to come to this. And it is something that God has, uh, uh, Christ has placed in the body, the fivefold ministry, and uh, uh, you know, for the equipping. As we live a normal Christian life, uh, pursuing Christ or being a disciple of Christ, now this is something that is expected. And right? this is something which means this is something that we can pursue wholeheartedly. What is that? Like to be equipped for the work of ministry, right? Uh, which causes the edifying of the body of Christ till. Uh, to come to the unity of the faith, and to come to the knowledge uh, and and the knowledge of the Son of God, uh, to a perfect man or a mature person, right, and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, how would Christ be? 
right? Uh, what is Christ like to come to that uh, stature? So in in our walk, in our attitude, uh, in how we you know we we, we know that uh, this uh, you know when it comes to ministry, when it comes to you know our personal lives and so on, you know maybe maybe we have a certain understanding of that, but then we need to know that okay in marriage, in uh, you know uh, maybe as a parent, this applies as well. Okay, so this applies. So we're called to have the same mind of Christ uh, when it comes to this. Right? Philippians 2 talks about that, right? Uh, don't do anything from selfish ambition or from a desire to be boastful, to be boast, or I'm sorry, desire to boast, but to be humble uh, towards one another, considering others better than yourselves. Now, now many times we apply this in with everyone else, every other you know believer, uh, you know, maybe if you're in ministry with every other church member, but when it comes to the home, you know, to consider each other better than themselves, or to consider the other better than oneself, uh, and not to have uh, a selfish ambition, not to you know to boast and uh, and to put oneself uh, above, uh, you know, to be prideful and not to humble oneself, you know, in the home. Um, is it a reality, right? So that's uh, uh, that's a, that's a difficult thing, right? Because because in the home, what happens is in the home setting, right? We we let down, you know, we could have put on an act outside, or we could we could have put on a mask outside, but in the home, all defenses are down, and right? we are not putting on something for others. We are being ourselves. So when it comes to being ourselves, this is what Christ desires. This is what God desires, that we be Christ-like. Not just outside when people can maybe say some things, people can, you know, uh, uh, maybe, you know, uh, where we are careful about our image. But within the four walls of the home, where we need to be Christ-like. Very important. Right, so, um, so the thing is this: uh, when we consider our attitudes, when we consider, okay, am I being Christ-like? Think about the home. Think about the place where you don't have to put on an act. Right, uh, where where you don't have to like put on a, a mask, or where you don't have where you don't have to constantly think, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? In the home with your spouse with your children right uh, how are you are you being christ like now that's a very important because if we are in the home if you are being christ like then it'll be you know it'll just flow out when we go out and we do it uh, whether people are watching or not watching you know we will be but then in the home when you know our friends are not watching, when our boss is not watching, when our pastor is not watching, um, you know, we we let loose, right? We cut loose, we, 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 we actually put on display our worst self rather than being Christ-like. Okay, so uh, that is something very, very important. Okay, so we'll continue this in our, uh, you know, next class. Uh, but just think about this, right? Okay, so we'll stop here. And we'll take a break and come back for our next class. Thank you.